What's up guys, I'm Tony Woodark. I'm a wedding photographer out of Southern California and today I'm gonna to talk to you about how I shoot weddings with film or on film or film photography, however you wanna say it. I just wanna tell you about the process that I do and kind of how I got to where I got, give you a little bit of insight into how much it costs, how I back up my work with digital, how I work with the second shooter, and I asked you guys a bunch of questions on Instagram too, and so I, I wanna answer those as well. So let's jump in. So first up, let's talk about why I photograph weddings on film. Film has just a aesthetic that you don't get from digital. I think a lot of it comes from how it handles light, just the dynamic range of film. What I mean by dynamic range is basically how it handles dark shadows and then bright highlights. With weddings, I'm photographing a lot of the wedding day and the first look and a lot of those different parts of the day during bright, harsh sunlight. And there's kind of nothing that I can do to get around that. With photographing weddings, you have to be able to photograph in all different types of light. And what I love about film is how it handles that harsh light. It still gives it that really beautiful tone. And so that to me has been one big factor in why I like using film is just, it gives me a much nicer, softer look in harsh light. Another thing that I like about film is just, I love the look straight from the lab that I get. So I shoot the film and then I send it off to a lab. I use Goodman Film Lab. And when I get the scans back, they're about 90, 95% of the way there. I'm just adjusting contrast and highlights and making really minimal changes sometimes warming up the photo, but really not having to do much. And to me, the less time that I can spend on the computer and the more time that I can spend photographing, the more I just get to enjoy what I'm doing. I really love the part of shooting and working with couples and spending most of my time on that rather than sitting behind my computer and trying to just edit my brains out. And so the less time I can spend editing, the more happy I'm gonna be and just the more passionate I can be about my work. One big thing that people struggle with is not being able to see the photos as you're shooting them. I basically spent all of 2019, all of my personal work, I shot on film. And so I got really comfortable with that process of photographing different scenes in all different types of lights, indoors, dark, bright, bright harsh sunlight, shade, um, backlit, front lit, just kind of all the different lighting scenarios, shooting my family and just personal work. And so I got to see the results of how the film handled those different types of light. And so I spent a lot of time just really honing in the differences between the two so that I could get comfortable with a wedding day and just understanding how different light is gonna handle on film. So what I like specifically about film is that it just has a texture and a feel to it. Even photos that aren't super sharp, they just have a feel to them that digital photos don't. When a digital photo is out of focus, it just kind of feels like you should toss it. Where a film photo, if it's slightly out of focus, it, it, I feel like it has a little bit more room for you to like a, accept it as like artistic or just it, it has that feel to it still that you can get away with it, I feel like. Not that you should shoot your photos out of focus, but I think it's okay just to really focus on moments rather than the perfection of a thousand sharp photos. I also just love the colors and tones that you get. I shoot mostly Portra. So pretty much the entire day I'm shooting Portra 400. I typically push it a stop. And what that does is gives me extra contrast and extra saturation. And so the scan straight from the lab is pretty much how I want the film to look. One thing that people really questioned was the cost of it. And so I wanna break down the financials of the last couple weddings that I've shot. So I shot five weddings so far in 2020 and I kept records of all the different rolls of film I shot. And so I can break down kind of a cost analysis of, of how much it costs for the film, how much it costs for developing and scanning, and just overall an average per wedding. So let's get into it. So every wedding is different. Sometimes you have more hours of coverage or just a different place. You need to shoot a lot more photos, family photos. There's a lot more family um, groupings or whatever. And so this is just on average. This is the example of a, a recent wedding that I shot. And here's how it broke down. Usually I shoot about 20 to 25 rolls of 120 medium format. And so with the contact 645, 
that ends up being 16 photos per roll. So 16 times 20 is 320 photos. So somewhere about 320 to 400 photos of medium format. And those are my main key shots. So main parts of the ceremony, main portraits, family photos, group photos, bridesmaids, groomsmen, all of those kind of photos I'm taking with the Contact 645. So that's my main camera that I'm using. My secondary camera, I've been changing. I was using the Contax G2 for a while, which is a 35 millimeter camera. And now I'm gonna be using the Canon EOS 3, just because I can switch lenses between my digital camera and my film camera. But with 35 millimeter, I usually shoot four to five rolls or so, which at 36 frames per roll, about 150 to 200 frames per, of 35 and about 300 to 400 frames of 120. So that for cost of film equates out to about $200 in medium format film and about $30 or so in 35 millimeter film. So right there you have $250 or so with taxes and shipping or whatever of just the cost of film itself. Then I take the film and I drop it off at Goodman Film Lab, which is a great film lab in Irvine, California. They do the developing and the scanning for me. And then that typically runs about $300 to $400. Pushing a roll of film costs an extra dollar per roll. Um, I do basic scans just because I'm gonna end up editing them a little bit anyways. I know a lot of film photographers that I follow, they do premium scans because they can work at the lab and the lab will kind of do adjustments for them. I'll probably get to that point, but right now I'm still just really trying to fine tune what I want the film to look like. And then once I get that perfected, I'm gonna get the lab to kind of have a color profile for my work and I'll have them, I'll pay a little bit extra for them to do those edits for me. So all in, we have about $250 worth of film and about $350 or so of developing. We're looking at about $600 just for the cost of film and scans itself. So that's something that you need to factor in when you're looking at charging for a wedding. There's a lot of other costs that I have between my CRM software, HoneyBook, Pixie Set for photo delivery, um, my computer, hard drives, cameras, camera cleaning, um, taxes, all of that. So there's a ton of other costs that go into it. So something just to look at when you're trying to map out how much it's, you're gonna have to charge for a wedding. Okay, so how I actually shoot during the day. I typically wear my hold fast straps and I have a three camera setup. So I'm right handed and so my right camera is my contact 645. My left camera is a digital camera and so that's usually my Canon 5D Mark IV which I'm filming with. And then around my chest, I usually have my 35 millimeter camera. So that's been a Contax G2, or now I'm gonna be using the Canon EOS 3. The nice thing about the Canon EOS 3 is I can switch my lenses between my digital camera and the 35 millimeter camera. And so I can have a 35 on one and an 85 on other, the other, which I feel like is the perfect combo. And then my Contax 645 has an 80 millimeter on it, which with medium format, it's roughly a 50 millimeter. So I kind of have 35, 50, and 85, which is a perfect spectrum for me. And then the long lens ceremony shots, I have my second shooter has a 70 to 200. With my second shooter, they're shooting digital the whole time. I've been trying to incorporate a little bit of film with them just for getting ready shots or shots that I can get again later, but just trying to get them more comfortable with film. But for the most part, they're shooting digital the whole time. And so I use Mastin Labs to edit my photos to ma make them look like the film shots that I shot. And so all the photos get edited by me and delivered in one full gallery. And so to the client, they all have that same color tone and look, but I would say the medium format film photos are kind of far and wide better than all the rest of the photos. How I shoot is basically, Contact 645 is the first shot that I get and I will take a couple shots with that of, of most scenes. And then I usually use my digital camera as a backup and get those same scenes with my digital camera. The 35 millimeter is really for those supplemental photos that I feel like rounds out a gallery. A lot of that candid, um, those candid photos of guests and just kind of people talking or um, details that aren't like the main details and just kind of adding 
more images into the final gallery that kind of rounds out the stories. But if I feel like it's not a photo that's gonna get printed or is like a main key shot, then I'll probably try to shoot it on 35 millimeter film just to save costs and also just allow me to have more photos and I'm not having to change out the rolls as much. My second shooter is a second shooter and he's shooting or she's shooting digital the entire time. And so I am shooting my own film and I'm actually um, reloading all of my film the entire time. And so that takes a little bit of time. And so I wanna make sure that whatever cameras I'm using are the right ones for the right times. That does slow me down, but it also allows me to really focus on what I'm doing and set up a shot and then make sure that I have the right film loaded and just enough frames for a scene. And then I can really just be um, focused on what I'm doing. And then as I'm changing a role, I'll either have my second shooter step in and direct, or I'll give the couples a break and let them enjoy their time with their guests or whatever. And so I try to make it as fluid as possible of a um, continuous shooting, but also just giving uh, the couple breaks when they need it. And then I also have different inserts with my Contact 645, so I can have a few extra inserts already rolled, and so I can switch those out really quickly. That's pretty much it. That's how I shoot weddings um, with film. I got a ton of great questions from you guys, and so I wanna dive into those now. Okay, let's jump into the questions. Steph asked, my film camera seems to take longer to focus, and I'm afraid to miss a shot at a wedding. For sure, I think that's why I spent basically an entire year shooting all my personal work on film so that I could get really comfortable manually focusing and really just making sure that I'm comfortable with my equipment so that I'm not slowing myself down on the wedding day. Guaranteed a digital camera with autofocus is faster at focusing than a manual camera, manual focus. But once you get comfortable with your camera and you're able to know when something's gonna happen, and you can already be pre-focused, it's pretty seamless. I don't think it's much slower. It definitely is a little bit slower. Ra 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 Moreno, Ra Moreno. How did your first wedding shoot went? Any tips or reminders for the beginners? So I've shot 50 weddings or so already on digital, and I basically, every single wedding, I shot a little bit more film at each wedding. So I started with one camera with one roll of film. And I shot a bunch of weddings where I just had one film camera, one roll. And then I started shooting about two rolls, kind of five rolls. And then I got up to about seven rolls or so. And that was to that point where it was like, okay, now if I want to switch, I need to just focus on film and then have digital as a backup. And so I went from seven rolls to like 30 rolls or so. And so that was kind of the transition. How my first wedding went, it went really well. I hired a second shooter out of my own pocket so the couple didn't pay for a second shooter it was a wedding in a place that i felt comfortable shooting and so i decided this is the wedding i'm going to shoot primarily film i had a digital backup and then i hired a second shooter even though the couple didn't pay didn't pay for it so that they could shoot all digital as well so i had a backup just in case anything went wrong the wedding went amazing and it basically gave me the confidence to do that again and I've done that for the last five weddings now. And so I think moving forward, I feel really comfortable. I definitely want to have a second shooter with me when I'm shooting film. The last wedding I shot, I shot mostly um, film and I didn't have a second shooter. And at that point, it's a lot of pressure. It went great, but I just, I want to have a second shooter from here on out. Most film photographers I know have a second shooter and also an assistant that's loading their film. So. I don't really want to have that big of an entourage. I'll probably end up getting there. But for right now, a second shooter and then me just being ready with my film, I feel in a good spot there. Chris Hamlet asks, does a client pay or ask for film to be shot beforehand or is it something you do as a preference? So it's a good question. I think when I was first deciding, you know what, I want to start incorporating film into my work. I was like, do I upcharge clients for it? Because there is an additional cost. But something I kind of quickly realized was the couples love the work that I produce, the, the work that I share on my Instagram and the work that I do, that's what they love. They don't necessarily know if it's film or know if it's digital or know why they love it. And so I don't want to make them feel like they have to choose, I want film or I want digital. 
I want that choice to be made by me, depending on the light, depending on the scenario, depending on you know whatever factors I have. I wanna choose the best medium for that time. And so I decided to not make that a choice for the couples. I'm basically, they're trusting me to deliver great photos and I'm gonna do everything in my power to pick the best medium to get the best results. So I don't suggest upcharging it unless it is a niche thing that you're just, you know, gonna do Polaroids or you're gonna do one roll of medium format and it's an extra 50 bucks or I don't know. If you have some sort of scenario that you worked out that you want to do, go for it, try it. But from my experience, I think it's best for you as a photographer to leave it in your own hands and make sure that your costs have that room in it to shoot film and develop it and you're not um, having to nickel and dime your clients. I personally like to like show up somewhere and it's all inclusive and everything I know is paid for rather than um, every single bag I check at the airport or whatever I have to pay for and I have to pay for the drink and I have to pay for this and I have to pay for that. I don't really like that scenario. I just want them to go, this is how much it's gonna cost, you're gonna get an amazing thing and that's it. Chris also asked, if you're shooting both digital and film, at what times do you choose each and why? So I kind of touched on that. I would say if I have a second shooter and it's a main scene, I'm gonna try to shoot film for everything. If it's only me and it's like the first kiss or something super important, I'm gonna shoot digital just because I can know that I nailed it right then. And then if I have time, I'll try to pull my film camera up and get a film shot as well. That might change over time, but that's just how I work is like, I want my main shots to be film if I have a backup on digital. If I don't have a backup on digital, I need to rely on digital just at this point. Andrea asked, I would love to learn more about lighting gear. So that's a good one. I would say right now, I am not super comfortable shooting film with flash or lights right now at dark night. It's something that I really wanna progress and work on and I will, but Typically when it gets to reception and indoors and the nighttime and dancing, I'm switching over to digital and I'm shooting 95% of the night on digital and I'll have one camera with a flash on it um, with film. And so I'll shoot maybe one or two rolls of film at night. I love the look of it. I actually like that direct flash look with 35 millimeter film, but I don't feel super confident in it in, in all scenarios. So I need to work on that. Daniel asked, how do you not look down at the LCD that isn't on the back of the camera after taking a photo? So that's a good question. On my Canon EOS 3, it feels exactly like my 5D Mark IV, um, it, and it looks pretty much exactly the same. So with that, I catch myself chimping for sure. Like I look down and I just laugh. But when I look down and laugh, I think, did I have my settings right? And so when I look and I see that I can't see the photo, I immediately just think, did I have my settings right? And then that's when I kind of will look at everything and go, yeah, I did. And if I didn't, I'll take another photo. And just that kind of gives me the moment to reassure myself that I nailed the settings. Lori asks, do you provide a digital file as well? What's the process for that if you do? So like I said, I send the film off to a lab, they develop the film, they scan it, and they send me JPEGs. So they send me just straight JPEGs from the scans. And then I do a slight edits to those JPEGs, as well as I take all the other digital files, attach the Mass and Labs preset to match the film. And together, I put all of that into one gallery and deliver that to the couple. I don't signify this is film, this is digital, whatever. I say, this is getting ready, this is first look. And there will be digital and film photos probably mixed in there but to the client, the one final gallery will have that consistent feel and it'll just be broken up by parts of the day. John asked, do couples actually request you take film knowing the risk, lower shot count and higher processing? Like I said, I tell my couples in my consultation that I shoot film and digital and these are the implications of it um, and this is why and all of that. And so my couples are definitely comfortable with me shooting film and, and understand the reasoning for it, but they still get a really robust gallery. I would say I still deliver more photos than are necessary and, and are expected. So in my contracts, I think I promise about 400 photos and I typically deliver anywhere from 600 to 800 plus photos. So they're getting more photos than they probably ever want. Um, but yeah, so it's not like they're not getting enough photos. Sarah Ann just said posing. 
So I'm assuming she's wondering, is posing different for film? I would say it is in terms of you really need to set up your shot and it takes longer for you to focus at times. And so it might make posing um, where you have to just slow down a little bit. So I make sure that the couple is comfortable in a good spot. I give them a prompt or let them focus on each other. And so it gives them a minute to like breathe and enjoy the moment. And then I'm taking the photo rather than when I'm with digital, I'm kind of like nonstop posing, shooting kind of back and forth. And so I think with film, it just slows me down a little bit, but it's almost better for the couples because they get to kind of catch their breath and just enjoy the moment. Taylor asks, matching film to your digital images. So like I said, I, if at any time I have a reference photo, so if I have a scene in the same lighting and I have a film photo of that, I will set that as my reference photo in Lightroom and then I'll take my digital photo, apply the preset. You can put those side by side using that little RA button on Lightroom and then I'll put it side by side. So I have the film photo and the digital photo and then I can start to edit the digital photo to match that film look. And then if I have more frames in that same scene, on digital, I can copy the adjustments and apply those to that and then just do those slight tweaks. So my goal is to make all of them look like the film shots that I have. Andy said, how many labs did you try before you found your forever home lab? Um, I've tried a couple different labs. Really, as soon as I tried Goodman, I was really happy with the results. Their customer service is amazing. The results were awesome. The price was fair and it's close to my house. It's 20 minutes or so up the street. And so I can drive there because I feel really sketchy like mailing a wedding, a film. I just feel so scary like putting someone's wedding in the mail and then shipping it off. And so I can drive it to the film lab and drop it off by hand. Alessandro said, yeah, I love when you put out new stuff, Tony. How do, how do you balance shooting hybrid number of shots and also the workflow of switching back and forth all day? So I feel like I kind of touched on that. I would say um, I definitely am shooting less. So I'm really trying to think about my shots and what shots are necessary and gonna be in the final gallery. I'd say if I'm just shooting digital, at the end of the day, I'll end up with like 5,000 photos or so. If I'm shooting film and digital, I'll end up with 500 or so film photos and maybe 1,000 digital photos. And so I'm shooting a lot less, but I'm being very focused on what I'm shooting and why. And so I think I get better results too from that. So that's kind of the differences of just digital or a hybrid. Jasmine said, how many photos do you end up providing at the end? How many don't make the cut? So out of the film photos, like I said, um, you know, there's maybe 300 or so, or 350, uh, medium format shots and then 150 35 millimeter shots. I would say the majority of my medium format shots end up making it. So if I took 350 medium format shots, maybe 320 or so will make it. There's only a handful here and there that are either kind of duplicative or just misfocus too much or I just don't like the shot and I'll get rid of those. But for the most part, almost all the medium format photos that I take, I'm delivering. The 35 millimeter, I'd say, is I have about an 80 or 90% delivery rate. I'm trying to make those those more candid shots and so people kind of interacting or whatever and that just allows for more kind of nuances to happen, weird faces, bad compositions, whatever. And so I'm a little bit more free flow with my 35 millimeter film and so I'd say about 80 or 90% of those shots are ended up making the gallery. That's it, that was all the questions you guys had. Um, hopefully that was helpful. If you like that, please like this video. If you have any more questions, I'd love to do another one of these. I'm still in the process of learning. I'm never gonna stop learning. Um, I always wanna improve getting better and more comfortable with film. And so I definitely would love to make another one of these in the near future. But if you guys have any questions at all, drop those in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe, like, do all those good things. Thanks. Try and make y'all comfortable. Yes.